Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's a pretty fascinating stuff. First up, Novogratz is shocked by how many institutions are now lining up to try and get Bitcoin. Really, if you've been in the space for any length of time, you will know that there's really no shocker to it, and it's everything just going to really be inevitable. Also, uh, as Biden preps a $3 trillion stimulus, Bitcoin could be set to erupt. So the real question is, when is this going to happen? And can we really just print to infinity? And how good of news is this actually for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general? And then lastly, I want to take a look at how to purchase Voyager. For those of you who live in uh, New York or any other place outside the United States uh, globally uh, using Uniswap, we're going to take a look at what is going on with those fees. All right, so we will go over all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is whew, 1 p.m. January 10th on Sunday. Uh, nice brisk day here in El Paso, Texas. Anything below 60 degrees I am not a fan of, but uh, here we are. So this is what we have that is going on in the market. So we've got uh, Bitcoin, which was which hit around $40,000, which was pretty good, but uh, now we are uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel at 38.2, which uh, can you imagine like two months ago if you would have said, yeah, it's going to be about $40,000 in a couple of weeks or just a month ago. People are like, nah, that's, that's insane. And uh, the only one that really predicted that pretty well, I mean, there's been a number of people, but I know Alex Mashinsky, I think he was off by like a hundred bucks. And then uh, Max Kaiser, I think was around 26, 27. So good for those guys. I didn't see that one coming. I thought it would still be 20,000 and we would uh, kind of scrape along slowly until around uh, maybe February, March. But uh, hey, here we are. I'll take it. Anyhow, ETH is the big winner, 5%, $1,300, and we've almost hit uh, one of the all-time highs of like around $1,440, so I'll take it. Yeah, Tether, nobody cares unless you're an auditor. Uh, XRP, down a percentage, but hey, still at $0.32. Cents. I've heard a lot of good things lately as far as XRP and why they think they're going to win uh, this uh, SEC lawsuit. I sure hope they do because uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I sent out a tweet. I said, I don't care what you say about uh, Ripple, the company. Uh, whatever they did, sure, I don't care. Uh, well, I do care, but I don't care about this particular instance. XRP, if you've ever used it, it is the fastest thing out there. Uh, the transaction fees are next to nothing, and it just works. And that's what everybody wants. It just works. So when I'm trying to transfer things around uh, for different uh, sites or Uniswap, and I've got to use Ethereum gas fees, it's ridiculous. Uh, take a look at my... Uh, uh, there was a tutorial that I did with Shapeshift, and I couldn't even complete the transaction because 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 the, the rates were just too through the roof. And uh, uh, as Ethereum 2.0 goes over to staking, hopefully those fees can get eliminated because if that could happen, then it's off for the races, and Ethereum will do great. Now, if they don't, then they're going to have problems. But uh, that's why the whole upgrade is there. All right. So then we got Litecoin down a, uh, about a percentage. Bitcoin Cash. 18%. And I always knew that Bitcoin Cash would do well. I said, no, when? Because they are part of the four horsemen. And those four horsemen, uh, you've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. So uh, these are for uh, PayPal. So if you have these four and they are you know, on PayPal, which is, has access to hundreds of millions of people, and people are looking like, well, I can't afford 40000 for Bitcoin, but Bitcoin Cash, I don't know what that is. But I'm going to use that, and that's what people are doing. And then the next one, of course, was Litecoin, and that one had a big bump. So let's see. Polkadot, Chainlink. Everything's down a little bit. Uh, let's see what else. I hate when it does that. <laughs> I use these. ESV, nothing really fantastic, nothing too awesome. That's it. So what I'd like to do is always take, we're going to take a look at uh, what if you just would invest in the Bitcoin, because that's what we have to compare ourselves. Wouldn't this be easier just to invest in a Bitcoin? Well, here's, here's what you know. So if you invest in Ethereum, you're up 12%. Congratulations. You're doing a great job. 40% for the week and even more so, I think, uh, overall. Uh, Tether, whatever. Uh, XRP, you're up 4.7. Actually, around the globe, you're doing pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, 25%, 5%. Uh, 0 0.5 everything's pretty much up so these are one of those days it just goes goes to show you that when bitcoin goes up then pretty much the all stake a hit and then when bitcoin uh, becomes stagnant or starts to dip a little bit things flow into altcoins and that's just uh, that's how it has always been i don't know if that's how it will always be and that is why we're going to talk about this next article so mike novogratz uh, financial genius, some will say, <laughs> uh, but he is the uh, he's the owner of Galaxy Digital and has been in cryptocurrency for quite some time. So, I like to 
hear what people have to say that are actually in these inner circles. And with Mike here saying, look, I've never realized how many institutions are lining up. You can take a look at this as like, well, this is just a guy who, of course, wants Bitcoin to do very well because he's uh, invested heavily into it. Or you could say, hey, maybe this is exactly what he knows and this is what smart money is doing. I will let you be the judge of that. So what is this article all about? Well, um, the author asked Novogratz if Bitcoin would still act as a safe haven and asset if the current speculative bubble bursts, Novogratz replied this. And this was, what he says here makes a lot of sense because you have to understand, as more institutions come in, that means that it's institutional, uh, traditional market money. And what is 100% liquid all the time? Cryptocurrency and digital asset markets. The other markets, they shut down. Cryptocurrency never does shut down. So when people say, ah, oh, there's, a, there's a decoupling, yeah, kind of, but not really, because as more institutions come in, they put more money into it. At some point, they'll be like, and especially if the stock market starts to uh, go down the tubes, like people are predicting at some point, but they've been predicting that forever, so who knows. Um, if that keeps happening, you, you have to understand these traditional market players that are just like uh, the hedge funds, uh, the ones that are just like institutional investors, not, not, like, not like the big guys like MicroStrategy, but all the, one, all the little ones that are getting in, they're going to start selling. And they're going to start selling in mass because they need to cover some losses. And this is exactly what Mike talks about. He says, if the speculative bubble bursts, Bitcoin will go down for a while. There's just too much correlation between people with risk assets. If you made a ton of money here and you're losing a ton of money here, at one point you're going to take some profits where you've made money. And so if the S&P was down 20% in the next three days, Bitcoin will be lower not higher. So I know people think, oh, no, you know, it's a great asset and, and it's, it's schmuck insurance like uh, Shamath Palahipatiya says. That's true. But you have to understand that people will still not see it that way. And I was actually talking to Alex, Alex Masioli over the Alex Masioli, and he's the, the head of institutional service at BQuant. He talks with billion dollar hedge funds all day, every day. And what he told me made me realize that there aren't as many steady hands as you would like to think out there. And I will let him explain it in his next video. I don't wanna take the thunder, but it made me really start to be a little bit more pessimistic at what's going on. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin's not gonna be great and the cryptocurrency is gonna be great in two, three, five, 10, 20 years. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the near term, expect major volatility. And that's just the way it is. And especially with what he told me about these institutional players. I gotta tell you, these. The more that I get into it and people talk about smart money, it's not smart money. They're just a bunch of gamblers. And that's really what it comes down to. Anyhow, um, he says Bitcoin would be lower, not higher, but there's an adoptional cycle going on with institutions wanting to buy this because it's really hard to see a way out for the central banks of our governments. It's really hard to see a way out for this giant deficit. And there was a little a snippet piece of information where it, it took a look at all the different, uh, all, all the money that's been printed in the U.S. And, the, and over the past nine months, it's like something like 40% or 60, something crazy has been printed in the last year, roughly, of all the money. So if you're going to print that much money, the value of the dollar goes down. And I think people are sick and tired of that happening. And that is why it's going to push them into crypto and digital assets. The problem is the people with the most amount of money are the ones that are buying in. And those guys, those suckers are the ones that are going to be playing the market for a long time. And I know there's a lot of things that are going to come down the pipe, especially with Ethereum. I was listening to Guy's channel over there at Coin Bureau. If you don't uh, check him out, if you don't know him, check him out. He's, he's great. And he was talking about the reason why Ethereum would really push up. And he made a lot of great points. But one of the points he talks about was that there's going to be Ethereum futures through CME. And that's going to come up in February. And he was excited about it. And I was frightened, quite honestly. Because if you remember back in 2017, when Bitcoin got added to the CME, uh, what happened? Well, it went right into the, in the toilet. Now, whether that be because of the natural fluctuation of the four-year cycles, like we always talk about, you know, where we have uh, the all-time high, or sorry, uh, we have the uh, having, we have the all-time high, we have the big dip, and then we have a reset. Every year, it's that same thing since 2012. So it, whether that be for that or something else, that when you get into futures markets and the CMEs and all the things that are playing around, all the options market, to me, it, it just never seems like it's going to do great. Now, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, that is where we're at. But again, uh, deficits, uh, this could be play a big part. And we're going to talk about Biden in a second. So he does say, to, uh, I do think Bitcoin's going to 
stay correlated to risk assets in the short run, but that correlation breaks down over time. It's shocking to me how many institutions are now lining up to get into the Bitcoin portfolio. So here's the thing. I mean, we've seen this all, we see this all day long, right? We see, we see the micro strategies, we see the mass mutuals, uh, we see the Paul Tudor Jones, we see everybody coming in and we think this is fantastic. There's no way that, that this can actually go down. And this one's totally different. And maybe everybody's right, but am I the only naysayer out there that like, you know what, I don't trust everybody. I don't trust everybody when everything's going in one direction. Are you trying to screw me over? Are, is, are things really, I, 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 sometimes I just don't think that, that everything is just uh, sugar land and rainbows and, and, and uh, magical gumdrops. I, I always have to be a little bit cautious because not just from what happened in 2017, you have to understand that, I mean, I made businesses, I've done pretty decent, uh, we'll say, uh, but I've also had some big failures and I've learned from those failures. And one of those things that I've learned is to be cautious and to minimize uh, what is going on around you as far as uh, volatility and to minimize risk. Anyhow, that's just what I have uh, for that. Let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, let's move on to our, our next little piece here, which is Joe Biden. So Joe Biden is coming into the office. Looks like he just got certified after that big riot that just went on. I don't even want to talk about that. It sucked. As Biden preps, $3 trillion stimulus, Bitcoin could be set to erupt. And if you remember when the last stimulus package came out, uh, it was $1,200 for every American. And then wherever you're at in the world, I think different parts of the world have different stimulus packages uh, from what I hear from different governments. But here in the States, we got $1,200 for everybody. And there was a little report um, from Coinbase that put out that as soon as that $1,200 stimulus check came out, they had a huge spike up of $1,200 deposits for cryptocurrency. So people are like, you know what? Uh, this money's on fire and uh, it's only going to depreciate. So I'm going to put it into something that does appreciate, which will be digital assets of cryptocurrency. Same thing, same thing I say all the time. So what is going on here? Well, Joe Biden has asked Congress to provide Americans with 2,000 stimulus payments to help offset the economic devastation of COVID-19. I don't know if you've heard of that. It seems to be a big thing. The incoming president has also proposed a $3 trillion tax and infrastructure package as part of his Build Back Better program. I got friends that work in constructions, uh, work in, in, in construction industry, also work for TxDOT, Department of Transportation. And I can tell you right now, there's a lot of crumbling going on in this, in this country, and that's just the way it is. So if they want to do infrastructure, pff, great, because we could use it. He states, economic research confirms that with conditions like the crisis today, especially with such low interest rates, taking immediate action, even with deficit funding, financing, is going to help the economy. And I think this is all true. And then it goes over some other stuff, balance sheets, boring. But you have to understand, the more that is printed, the better it is for Bitcoin. It's not really good for the country. It's not good for uh, the future economy. It's not good for uh, people who are elderly or the baby boomers or things like that because they're really, uh, they're leveraging their, their future uh, for all the different money that's gonna come into their pocket. It is, it is and always has been good for um, assets like a store of value, like a gold, like a silver. Oh, and also before I forget, uh, I, I need to put up the uh, package right here or the, the snippet. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, half the entire uh, market value of silver. Half, half of silver. Uh, just like that, isn't that amazing? And also, it's also been increasing into, into gold. So I don't want to get into that too much. I own, I own gold, silver, and Bitcoin. I just, old, I just old, own a hell of a lot more Bitcoin because there's a major upside. So when you see these types of things where there's money printed, money printed, money printed, with what's going on in the news, with the big companies that are getting in, don't you think people will get into, if they have an option between gold and silver and Bitcoin and Ethereum or something else, maybe, just maybe, they might pick an asset that actually appreciates wildly. Uh, but that's, that's up for you to decide. Uh, I think gold still has, uh, it's not as volatile, not near as volatile, but uh, Bitcoin has a greater upside. So let me know you think in the comment section, and uh, I think it's going to be a dynamic year. Let's finish up with a little tutorial. So uniswap.org, fantastic site, great, fantastic. I wish it ran a Cardano because then, then the fees wouldn't be so god awful high, but here we are. So uh, we had just talked about uh, the Voyager token. I've been talking a lot about that, especially since I did my um, price prediction. 
And let me look it up real quick. It actually slipped. It actually was a couple of weeks ago. It was around 284 on the on uh, CoinGecko or on, on the market cap, and then it reached as high as 103 in two weeks. That's a pretty good pretty good uh, uh, increase. I'm not one to like make a lot of predictions like, oh, this market small cap jam is going to be fantastic. I just, I just don't do that. But uh, like I said, I invest in the people. And I will invest into the CEO of Voyager, Steve Ehrlich. I will invest into uh, Charles Hoskinson. I will invest into Alex Mashinsky from Celsius because I believe in those guys. And uh, the same thing with Voyager. So now it's taking a little bit of a dip. dip. It's at uh, 134, which, I mean, still, I mean, you went from 284 to 134. Not bad. Not too shabby. So let me just come down here. Let's do like a week. That's a nice look. That's a nice looking uh, chart. Uh, not a chartologist. <laughs> not, I'm not a TA guy, but I know what I like. And uh, here we are. So we're kind of retracing. But um, a lot of people are asking me like, and this is, to me, this is a great time to buy. I dollar cost average. There are four tokens right now that I dollar cost average in every single day. And uh, those are uh, Ethereum, Cardano. I was trying to do Celsius, but now the fees are just ridiculous. So I had to stop. And also Voyager, because I can get on uh, uh, yeah, the Voyager app. So people are asking me, like, well, I, hey, Rob, I went to Voyager, and I typed in, I went to Voyager. I went, I went to Uniswap, and I typed in Voyager, and it's not there. So what the heck? You're a filthy liar. <laughs> so, like, all right. So, then I, I, so what you got to do here is when you go to Uniswap, click on Change, and then under CoinGecko, you might just scroll down around uh, whatever else, but for the CoinGecko list, you, you click Select, and then you go to here and go eh, Voyager, and there it is. And then you just do your magic and uh, get rid of this, and then you can get Voyager. So that, that, is, that is a big thing. This is also how I get uh, uh, Celsius, and then Uniswap is how I get Theta. And if you want to know the tutorials on how to do that, just go to danteachescrypto.com. The link is in the description. Super simple. And I'll show you that. The problem with Uniswap right now, you know what? Let's just do something real quick. I'm gonna take 0.1, I'm gonna get this much. Price impact, 1.96. I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can click on this and see what the actual, let's see. I'm gonna confirm a swap. And let's see what the gas price is. Wow. Well, not too bad. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, you can't see that on my screen because it, it doesn't come up. But the gas fee, I'm going to take a screenshot. Boop. Boop. So you can see it later. The gas fee is $16. So at $123, I'm going to reject this. It's going to be 16 bucks. That's kind of high. I'm not going to do that. So. Uh, again, if Ethereum gets the gets the um, gas fees down, I'll do something. But uh, as of right now, forget it. Anyhow, that's it for today. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, maybe two more is going to pop up on your left and right. Uh, I'm not sure for sure, but YouTube do their magic. And uh, that is all. So thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you have a great day. See you on the next one.